Okay, I know this isn't cool to admit, but as an adult, I still make a birthday and a Christmas list. Camping gear, books, new camera. So a couple years ago, my mom got me this big pile of gifts, but it was a bit odd. She got me a roll of paper towels, some plastic wrap, and latex gloves. It was like the perfect gift if I was a serial killer. And my mom said, this is for your new tiger, Simon. Now, a tiger hadn't been on my birthday list since I was ages 8 through 12, but this sounded awesome. This is Asia, Aiden, and my tiger, Simon. Simon lives at T&D Cats of the World. This isn't a zoo. This is a sanctuary. This is a refuge. I don't go looking for animals. I don't buy animals. This is Terry. He's a retired cop and a Vietnam vet. He's responsible for saving the lives of some of the most exotic animals in the world and then giving them a new home in the middle of Pennsylvania farm country. It's an unlikely place to find lions, tigers, and bears. Most of these animals would be dead if it weren't for Terry and his wife Donna, their children TJ and Jennifer, who run the sanctuary. There's about 300 animals that live here. Most of them are illegally owned animals and a lot of them are confiscated animals. And we uh, provide them a permanent home. I couldn't believe how many people buy illegal exotic animals thinking it's a fun thing and end up abusing or abandoning them. You know, you're buying them this big. Common sense should tell you that it's gonna grow. It's gonna be three, four, five, six hundred pounds. What are you gonna do? It's not eating Hamburg no more. So when they get big, whether they're abandoned or confiscated by the government, there's not really a place for exotic animals to go. So the government often euthanizes these animals, unless a sanctuary like TNDs steps in. The one bear over here found chained to a tree in a guy's front yard. The one bobcat in a pen here found in an apartment in Pittsburgh. Every animal here has a story, including Simon. This is Asia, Aiden, and Simon. These tigers were used as photo babies, uh, meaning that people would pay their 40, 50, 60 dollars to get your picture taken with a baby tiger. I knew exactly what Jennifer was talking about. When I was a kid, I'd go to the shopping mall and this group would sometimes come in and set up a safari backdrop and you'd get your picture taken with a tiger cub. And I begged my parents to let me do it. I figured if I couldn't own a tiger, I could at least own a picture of me with a tiger. My, my dad said no. He refused to pay 30 bucks for me to hold a tiger for two seconds. When we saw these tigers at the mall, I don't think anyone had a clue what was in store for them when they grew up. Like certain states are allowed, people are allowed to hold them until I think they're five months old. After that, they're considered dangerous, and nobody's allowed to pet them or hold them. Once they hit that five-month stage, they're not making no money with them. Tigers and lions eat about 20 to 30 pounds of meat every day. Um, they eat about 800 pounds of meat a month, and they live about 12 to 20 years. So it's a huge commitment, a huge responsibility to keep all of these photo babies. And if a facility is doing this as their business, um, they'd almost have to find homes for nine tigers every year. So they either pawn them off or they dispose of them. When one of these outfits was shut down, they found around 20 dead tigers, many of them stored in freezers. Turns out they were selling them for body parts. So yeah, they're actually worth more dead than they are alive. They say if you carry a whisker from a tiger, that'll protect you from bullets. Now I know some people I'd like to say, here, hold this whisker, I want to test this theory. But I wouldn't get away with it. Simon is just one of 300 animals at TNDs. There were monkeys that were rescued from tiny bird cages, cougars that were kept like livestock in a barn, and wild servals that were being illegally sold like a house cat. TNDs only exist because we're obsessed with owning stuff. A lot of the people feel it's their God-given right to own these animals. Well, no it isn't. You know, the tigers aren't to be owned by anybody. And I even tell people that when they say, oh, you know, do you own these animals? I'll tell them, well, I have a state license that says I do, and I have a federal license that says I do. But in reality, I don't own them. They weren't put here to be owned by any one person. Everybody here owns them. I'm just fortunate enough to be their caregiver. My childhood dream of owning a tiger made me feel like a real turd. I mean, sure, I was just a kid and I didn't know any better. But then I look at my recent birthday list, and I'm still obsessed with owning stuff. So my mom, instead of getting me all that crap that I wanted, 
she found a list of stuff the animals actually needed. And she sponsored Simon in my name, and then I got to go to T&D's and deliver those items. It was one of the greatest gifts. This summer, I got to spend several weekends at T&D Cats of the World. This is the first of two videos about the animals that live here and the volunteers that help them survive. At the risk of sounding cheesy, I think these stories will amaze and inspire you. And I hope you'll keep watching. Thank <laughs> you.